Hey everyone, uh, happy July the 4th week from uh, an Englishman. We've been pointing out that you can always, uh, you know, you can always choose Boris Johnson for your next president. He was born in the US or if you want a three-year-old president, uh, and we can make all sorts of jokes about that, then I think, um, if I'm not wrong, Lilibet, what's she called, Windsor is available. She was born, uh, Harry and Meghan's kid is born in the USA. Trouble is she's only three years old. Anyway, um, more seriously, the phone blew up today with chat that uh, Chevron is settling with Exxon on Hess. But I think, it, you know, the smart hedge funds were saying, look, that's clearly somebody goosing the market, trying to get out of a position, because why else would you come out with that rumor during July the fourth week? And, you know, it's hard to disagree with that. Speaking to the companies, there's nothing really meaningful coming out of what they're saying. It's really what the hedge funds are saying. And, um as it is, the current guidance remains that we'll get hopefully an FTC settlement in uh, Q3, uh, which is completely unpredictable essentially, but has to happen sometime. And um, you should get, uh, because they're progressing with the arbitration and now have three arbitrators, you should get, uh, th we're hearing from, from the Hess side that you, you know they're still looking for year end for this to be, uh, approved um, through settle or at least for the arbitration to be settled so on that basis actually it's not a, out of the question that exxon would settle because obviously they could take something away from this rather than nothing um and you know it wouldn't be beyond chevron i don't think to actually just say okay look here's a, here's a payment let's move on so uh, that's why it's that's why it's got the merger up so excited it, it's too suspicious given the timing uh, but it's not, a, you know, it's a brilliant rumor because essentially there is a real possibility of, of settling. Anyway, that's that. Uh, I don't know if you got the memo, but we're quite bullish on oil here, actually. I mean, we've said all along that Q3 will be will be a tightening um, quarter. And so we're looking for oil price to do well here. And particularly tomorrow, watch out for um, the DOE data to come in uh, with a draw. We've had a couple of big builds, which the market has kind of held up to, which is bullish, obviously, because the builds have come through, but oil has gone up. And now we're looking for it was, a lot of people are looking for a big draw tomorrow. So watch generally for tightening in Q3 is what we're calling for. We really don't get into the weekly ins and outs of the DOE data. Life is too short. But the general theme that the market should tighten with particular uh, recovery and strength in distillate globally is very bullish, actually. So we like oil and oil equities into Labor Day. Every Labor Day, we tend to cut the group to, to negative because that's the way it works. Oil tends to sell off after Labor Day quite naturally, seasonally, but the seasonally now Q3 should be good. And, you know, we like some of the things that sold off uh, during Q2. Q2 ended up being rough for us, raw uh, oils relative, whilst things like NVIDIA went mooned. Um, but now we're in, in a recovery process and some of the really good names, the ones that have gone up the most this year, the oil names that have gone up the most this year, but sold off the most uh, over the course of Q2 would be a, uh, some of the names that we like. And an example would actually be Exxon. You could also do Diamondback. If you're really bullish, you can buy a rig, which has been beaten up and is in the bottom right, in the bottom left quadrant, the, the, the bad performing quadrant. And then there's other stuff that we continue to avoid, such as solar. Notwithstanding the potential for a different outcome regarding presidential candidates, I think solar will get uh, will struggle as long as it looks like Donald Trump's going to win. Uh, but you know who knows? Maybe we'll get a sudden shift there um, in terms of whether or not Biden runs, and that could dramatically change the situation with solar, which I think will be driven by uh, you know the risk of a, of a Trump win and the deregulation being unsupportive of solar and alternative energy stocks. So we'll see. Although I was looking at one broker saying that they thought that uh, a Trump win would be positive for First Solar and for Tesla. Not sure I fully understood that, but there you go. Okay, that's about it. One thing that we should talk about at this time of year is refining. The refiners have been beaten up and you're seeing the earnings estimates for Q2 getting slashed. Uh, for example, PBF and others. But we had Delic on our call this week, uh, Uzi Yamin, saying that Delic had been running very well. And I think that uh, generally speaking, Q2 will come in okay. As a result, um, you know, if we get a decent strength in the oil market and particularly the recovery that we just talked about in distillate, what we'll see is, uh, is a much better performance from the refiners in Q3 as well, especially as uh, demand is holding up and refining margins are recovering from what were never terrible levels, actually. I mean, there was some significant sell-off in some key markets such as California and Asia. But now, if anything, th things are cheering up in Q3. So we could be in a Goldilocks here for oil 
where everything upstream, downstream, midstream goes up as people can't really buy any more video, although we've said that before. Um, but essentially with a good, a decent oil price uh, backdrop and better distillate demand, distillate numbers, you could see a rotation back into oil and that's the basis for us liking the oils into Q3. Okay, I think I'll leave it there and keep it short, uh, not least because there's a soccer game I've got to watch. Whilst we're watching the soccer, you might enjoy my uh, original, <laughs> I love this thing, it's a, it's a horse-drawn shell cart that uh, complements the 1970s tanker and uh sorry for those of you who said that i really enjoy your gardening videos we'll come back and discuss the tomato plant next week have a great week